Hey everybody, welcome back to the Current MMA YouTube channel. I'm your host, Gordo Gambles, and whoo, we are on absolute fire. Thank you to everyone tuning into these videos, and I hope you guys are making money with me because we're not stopping there. Another night of UFC fights, not the greatest card, but fights are fights, and I'm gonna watch them, and I'm gonna try my best to make some money off them. Similar to last week, I got three core plays I'm giving you, and I'll give you a couple extra in the background as well, but another low-level card. We're picking our spots, and we're doing really well when we do that. Last week, we went 4-1, and one, looking to do the exact same thing here. Maybe even 5-0. and oh. Let's get greedy with it. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. First play of the day. I got to do it. I got to take Tabitha Reedy, Baby Shark, my girl, to win this fight here. Um, currently sitting around minus 125, minus 130. Um, I do think she's the rightful favorite here. I think she'll be even wider than this now. Tabitha Ricci, Baby Shark here. Great grappler. Remember, she got a really tough UFC debut against Manon Ferriou. I think she's a better fighter here. Paulina Vienna, yes, has submission wins to her record, but against a lot weaker opponents than Ricci is. I think Ricci is very, very talented and has the credentials to stay safe on top. When it comes to winning minutes, wrestling, striking, anything on the feet, I'm giving that to Ricci as well. Um, all you gotta say is if Hannah Cypher survived on top, I think Ricci can as well. Ricci trains with some great opponents in there. Vienna allows 38% control time, and I do think Ricci gets even more than that here. And to make things even better, I think this one playing out a lot like the Cortez versus Gata one. Sure, Vienna may be able to throw up a couple armbar attempts. I don't think they're gonna phase Ricci too much. Give me a Ricci all day. Next up, Michelle Pereira, one of the most entertaining fighters in UFC history. And maybe that's going out on a limb here, but he is a super fun guy to watch. And I'm taking him to beat Santiago Ponza Nibio here. Super fun fight, opened up really close, and I think it is still really close. Michelle Pereira sitting around minus 125, similar to Ricci. Uh, and I do think he's the rightful favorite here. Ponza Nibio, once upon a time, was this great lethal finisher of the division. He took a couple years off and hasn't looked his true self. What Pereira has done though is he's evolved. He's become a better fighter, a smarter fighter, and he's won a lot of really good fights recently. That Fiala win is aging so well with all of Fiala's recent success. Easily put, I just think Pereira is a more active minute winner, and although Ponzinibbio will be able to walk him down, Pereira's a sniper, really good technical striking, and even has that wrestling in his back pocket if he needs to. The only concern I have on the Pereira side is that cardio. However, he has looked a little smarter, a little more composed, I do think he beats Ponce Nibio this weekend. Keeping it short and sweet, I do like Pereira to win this weekend. And our last core confident play of the three is going to be Jailton Almeida versus Parker Porter under one and a half rounds. And I know what you guys are thinking. There's no way those guys are fighting each other. I had no idea either. Jailton Almeida is the guy who's absolutely dominating light heavyweight. Looked super impressive in his first two performances. No one wanted to fight the guy. So we step it up to 265 at heavyweight to face Parker Porker Parker. Parker Parker Porker Parter. Parker Porker Porter. It's a tongue twister, but uh, Porter's just a guy who's who's big and huge. And even though he's just like this big guy, Jailton's still gonna be bigger. He's still gonna have this clear, clear grappling advantage. The only concern we have here is that size. With that being said, that size may be able to tire out Jailton and make it so maybe Porter has some finishing ability too, which is why we're taking that under 1.5 rounds. The clearest outcome of this fight is Jailton takes him down, dominates him on the ground, destroys him in that first round. I can see that happening a lot of the time. But to play it safe, under 1.5, minus 135, all day. Jailton just a, a very violent finisher and really good at what he does. I think he takes down Parker Porter, puts a stamp on his heavyweight debut, and does really well doing so. All right, last two plays, not as confident. I haven't even locked them in myself. I think the lines might get even better. Um, but I'm taking the dog shot on Chase Hooper this weekend. He's going to be the bigger, taller. I know, I can't believe I'm saying that. Chase Hooper and bigger in the same sentence. He's going to be the taller, rangier fighter this weekend. He's facing a guy in Corrales who is going to give him that fight he wants. Corrales is a wrestler. He's a grappler. He's going to let Hooper go to the ground with him and have some pretty decent exchanges. But that being said, Corrales isn't a guy who impresses me that much. When you're giving me Hooper at this dog price tag... So at that dog price tag, I'm definitely intrigued on Hooper here. I'm gonna have to bet it. I just think he's a good path to victory. Kalar's gonna give that to him. And even at that, Kalar's doesn't impress me too much on the feet. Give me the dog shot at Hooper. I'm gonna take that. Last but not least, we're taking Omar Morales into the distance. Yes, not the other Morales, not Corrales, Omar Morales. Tough, very confusing card. It's funny how they all his name together, but Omar Morales facing Euros Medic, a guy who I kind of think is a fraud. Coming out the Alaska fight scene is a very killer to be killed fighter. Never been past the 1.5 round mark in fights. I think that finishing equity is there all day. Submission, late punches in the end because Medic does tend to fade because he's never been past 1.5 round. Everything leans towards Morales winning this fight. And I'm completely content with taking this shot on the plus money for him to finish. I'm going to be safer. Take his money line because I do think he wins the rounds. 
good minute winner with that with that pressure that durability great kickboxing and he always has the wrestling and bjj in his back pocket morales not only is a great plan DraftKings, but also a good bet to make on this fight and that's gonna do it for me here on the current mma youtube channel hopefully you guys enjoyed my best bets once again check me out on twitter at gambles gordo you can even check out my dfs video on plays and fade sports show me some love there i appreciate doing these hopefully we can stay hot after we absolutely torched the last two cards I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Once again, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Show some love, guys, and let's make some money. Ding.